Hello everyone, welcome to Engineering and Automation YouTube channel. In our first video about the basics of building management system, we saw a short introduction about the various communication protocols used in the BMS system. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you to watch it after this video. In today's video, we will learn about the backlink protocol, which is the standard communication protocol for building automation and control networks. Backlink protocol is developed and managed by Ashray. The objective in developing backlink protocol was to create a protocol that would allow building systems from different manufacturers to work together in a harmonious way. Prior to BACnet, it was practically impossible to achieve this. BACnet enables the building owners to have an integrated control of all the various systems from different manufacturers in a single monitor rather than having separate monitor for each of the manufacturers. The BACnet specification has three major parts, objects, services, LAN and internet working. The first part describes a standard way of representing the building automation equipments. The second part defines messages that can be sent across a network to monitor and control the building automation equipments. And the third part defines the set of acceptable LAN communications with the selection of various network transport technologies. Now we will see about the BACnet objects. To standardize different systems from multiple manufacturers, BACnet uses objects. An object is the collection of information that is uniquely identified and accessed over the transportation medium in a standardized way. Standardized objects make all the devices within a BACnet system look similar. Examples of objects are physical inputs, physical outputs and software process such as schedules, control loops, alarms, software calculations, etc. Currently, BACnet defines 60 types of objects and the most commonly used 25 object types are shown here. If you want to learn more about the BACnet objects, you can find plenty of resources at the BACnet official website. Each object has a standard set of properties that defines the object and its current state. For example, each unlock input is represented by a BACnet unlock input object, which has a set of properties like object identifier, object type, present value, description, units, etc. The BACnet standard identifies 123 different properties of objects. Some of the properties are required and some are optional. The first three properties, object identifier, object name and object type must be present in every object in a BACnet device. One of the most important properties is the object identifier. It is a 32-bit code that identifies the types of object and its instance number, which together uniquely identify the object within the BACnet device. A BACnet device is a set of BACnet objects. Next in the BACnet specification, is the BACnet services. One BACnet device obtains information from another device, commands another device to do some actions by means of services. Each service request issued and service reply returned becomes a message packet that is transferred over the network from the sending to the receiving device. An application program running on the BACnet device issues service request and processes them upon receipt. BACnet defines 32 services and classifies them into 5 categories. The object access services provides the means to read, modify and write properties and to delete or add objects. Alarm and event services deals with changes in conditions seen by a background device including alarms. Alarms and events change might indicate a problem or error conditions such as a sensor reading out of normal range or a change of value COV. COV reporting is an useful alternative. Instead of repeatedly polling an object for some monitored value, COV reporting allows the device to send out notices when a change occurs, thus reducing the network traffic. The file access services in BACnet are used to read and manipulate files in BACnet device. Every BACnet accessible file has a file object associated with it. Remote device management services provides a number of different functions including operator control, specialized message transfer and auto configuring functions. Virtual terminal services is used by an operator to establish a bi-directional text-based connection with an application program. There are two categories of services, confirmed services and unconfirmed services. In confirmed services, a reply from BACnet device with the data is expected by the requesting device. In unconfirmed services, no reply is expected from the BACnet device. BACnet devices are not required to implement every single service. Just one service, read property is required to be processed by all the BACnet devices. Depending upon the function and the complexity of the device, additional services may be initiated. 
Next is the Hoys and IAM services. This is used to obtain network addresses of backend devices on a backend network. A backend device that needs to know the address of a device can broadcast Hoys service request on the internet network, specifying a device object instance number. The responses do not come back as a reply. Instead, the device that has specific device object broadcast an IAM service. This allows the client to acquire the information from the specific device without creating more network traffic. The who has and I have services are similar to the who is and I am service, but the who has service adds either an object identifier or an object name. Receiving device which contains an object matching the request broadcasts the I have service, which will be seen only by the requesting device. Before proceeding to the backend LAN and internet working, let's see how the backend architecture looks. Backnet is based on OSI model of networking systems. The OSI model have seven layers as shown here. But Backnet uses only four layer architecture corresponding to the OSI model. The four layers from the OSI model within the Backnet architecture are application layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. All message processing is handled at the application layer, including device addressing. The application layer decides what to do with the Backnet message. This layer handles the actual interface with the user application program. It also takes care of mechanisms associated with transport and session layers. This is where the backnet objects and properties are defined. Next is the backnet network layer. The purpose of the network layer is to provide the means by which messages can be routed from one backnet network to another, regardless of the backnet data link technology on that network. The data link layer organizes the data into frames or brackets. This layer defines the rules for addressing, error checking, network access, flow control, presentation and message format. Final layer is the backnet physical layer. The physical layer provides a means of connecting the devices and transmitting the electronic signals that convey the data. This layer defines the hardware specifications, electrical signaling, topology and physical network design. The overall backnet architecture is shown here. The physical and the data link layers represent the LAN technology options supported by the backnet. As seen in this architecture, Backnet provides five LAN technology options Backnet Ethernet, Backnet Opnet, Backnet IP, Backnet MSTP, Backnet LAN Talk, and one point to point protocol Backnet PTP. The highest performance LAN option is the Ethernet, which offers high speed and its use is extremely widespread. Backnet Ethernet uses MAC addresses to establish communication. Ethernet is more expensive in terms of cost per device. The second alternative is the ARCnet. ARCnet is a low cost alternative which operates at a speed of 2.5 megabytes per second. ARCnet requires dedicated communication chips. ARCnet is used in applications where the device requires low speed for communication. The third LAN network is the BACnet IP. The BACnet IP protocol uses IP address and UDP ports for communication with the existing Ethernet network. Also, Backnet IP protocol can be used in virtual LAN networks. It supports hundreds of devices and this is the preferred communication protocol of Backnet. The fourth networking possibility in Backnet is based on RS485 at physical layer and master slave token passing protocol at the data link layer. Backnet MSTP communicates at a speed of 1 megabytes per second. It also offers long range communication with 1200 meters and even longer with repeaters. The final LAN protocol option in Backnet is LAN Talk. LAN Talk is a proprietary protocol developed by Echelon Corporation, which operates at a speed of 1.2 megabytes per second. LAN Talk is a seven layer protocol implemented on a single chip called Neuron, which uses Neuron ID for device addressing. No physical medium is specified in the LAN Talk protocol. The final data link and the physical layer option in Backnet is the point to point protocol. The PTP protocol access the communication medium through RS232 interface. A typical application would be to connect a telephone modem for dial up access to a remote building automation system. Backnet PTP runs at a very low speed of 56 kilobytes per second as it is only a point to point communication. From these six communication protocols supported by Backnet, the most widely used and most popular communication protocols are Backnet IP, Backnet MSTP, Backnet LAN Talk, which 
we will be seeing in detail in the upcoming videos. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys have learned something useful from this and thanks a lot for watching this video. You can go to official Backnet website for more information on Backnet. If you guys like the contents of this channel, please consider subscribing to our channel and click the bell icon to enable notifications. As always, please leave your feedback and suggestions in the comment section. Also, like this video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.